All right, JMC 6000 here in the JMC Garage for this week's JMC Garage Talk, talking about the new Nissan 1.5 three-cylinder VC turbo engine. Now, you may be like, what in the world does VC stand for? Well, VC stands for variable compression. And this engine has the ability to actually adjust its compression ratio from 8.5 to 1 all the way up to about, I believe it's 14 to 1. I could be off on that, but it can adjust anywhere in between with its fulcrum kind of mechanism. So can we kind of explain and then we'll kind of look at this engine and see what exactly what Nissan has done here with this three cylinder 1.5 liter. So about six years ago, Nissan came out with the two liter variable compression turbo four cylinder engine. And basically the idea on premise, if you want to look up a demonstration of that, Nissan does have a version of this on video if you look at it through if you look at it up on youtube nissan variable compression engine there is a video demonstration by nissan you can get a little bit better idea but the whole premise on idea is this there is a electromechanical motor at the bottom of the engine that works in tandem with a fulcrum system that is connected to the connecting rods which connecting rods are then connected to the crankshaft which then drives a the whole engine and and drives into the transmission and at the final drive but anyway so what this does is this fulcrum system that is controlled by this electromechanical motor will actually adjust itself and adjust the actual stroke of the pistons the more stroke you give the more the you increase you the more you increase i'm sorry the more you decrease the compression if i remember correctly the more you decrease the compression and the shorter the stroke the more you increase the compression because it has less of and I may be backwards on that well we'll just say anyway it's that idea and premise if that makes sense so the idea is when you want max power you have the turbo on full boil so what that means is it actually decreases compression and I believe it works by increasing the stroke and I may be wrong but I believe it works that way anyway by increasing the amount or uh, decreasing the compression, you can give more pressurized air, more turbo air into the engine, which theoretically increases compression automatically. And then as you're cruising or just kind of punting around, it increases compression, which increases emissions or decreases emissions rather, not increases, it decreases emissions and helps you get better fuel mileage that way. So for example, if you're on full boil, you got your foot on the floor, you know, the, the engine will be at maybe eight and a half to one compression, which is able to cram a lot of air through the turbo. But if you're just putting around and your foot is off the gas, then the engine can increase the compression up to almost 14 to one compression, which is pretty awesome, and unique, and it really helps this vehicle and this engine to really get good gas mileage as a result. So Let's go ahead and look at some of the components of this particular engine. Again, this is a 2024 Nissan Rogue. This is a 1.5 liter. It's amazing how much power they're getting out of this thing. Almost 200, I'm sorry, a little over 200 horsepower, almost 230 pound-feet of torque. Absolutely amazing what they're able to get out of it. just a small 1.5 liter three-cylinder. The only other three-cylinder that I know of actually puts more, more power in a production car is Toyota's own Corolla GR Corolla rather which uses your very own 1.5 but in Nissan what we have here is we have the charge air or not the charge air before it gets charged fresh air comes in here through the front goes into the air filter comes in through here and then it goes into the uh, bottom side of the turbo here comes out of the turbo compressed into this charge air pipe and then it goes into this big contraption underneath this Nissan uh, air reduction, or not air reduction, but air noise reduction right here. And it goes into what they call a air to water intercooler. So this intercooler has its own little water pump. It has its own little coolant reservoir and actually delivers cool, well, chilled water to help cool down the air before it goes into the engine itself. Uh, the throttle body is right here. It comes out of the air to water and cool into the throttle body, and then it goes into the engine. Now, a couple things about this engine. It is direct injected, but it's only direct injected. It does not have direct and port injection like a lot of modern engines do. 
So carbon buildup may be an issue. I haven't heard anything about carbon buildup on these particular engines, whether it be the two liter or the 1.5, but that could be an issue as well. But also what I wanted to focus on as well is this does have a, um, so for you do have variable cam timing for the intake and exhaust. For the exhaust, it's oil pressure driven. For the intake, it's electromechanical via a actual uh, electromechanical actuator, which is right here, almost like what you would see on Toyota's newest engines on the Dynamic Force and also on Mazda's newest engines as well. So, and then you see the turbo right back here. From what, you can, from what I can see, from what I can dictate here, this engine is actually not too bad to work on. You do have your coils right here. One, there's one right underneath the charge air pipe that's two, and then you got number three right over here. Uh, you add the oil right here. And then you have a dipstick right here to check it. Again, pretty easy engine to work on. Your accessory drive belt is right up front here. Um, a little bit difficult to get to, but not too, too bad. I've seen worse when it comes to front wheel drive. Again, your two coolant reservoirs. But other than that, everything's all logically laid out. One of the downsides to this engine um, that I've seen is that just like with any three stone, I don't care who makes it, whether it be Toyota, Ford, Nissan, whoever, they vibrate at idle. It's just hard to get a three cylinder to run smooth. And this engine, no exception. I'm not going to start it up now, but as it's running, I can put my hand on. You can see my hand visibly shake like this when this thing's at idle. But what's nice is that Nissan does such, such a well job with the engine mounts that you do not feel it in the cabin. Even at idle, even when the air conditioner is on, even when you're sitting there and drive, you don't feel it in the cabin, which is very, very awesome. So even though this does have a little bit of a typical three-cylinder idle shake, you don't feel it, So which is nice. But anyway, that's pretty much the down and dirty bits of the Nissan VC turbo engine. Um, from what I've seen, I haven't really heard of any issues or anything that really causes any concern for me. Why I personally, I wouldn't, I, you know, I, let me rephrase that. Personally, I would get something like this or I would buy this vehicle because I, from what I understand, from what I can tell, Nissan has done a good job and and they really done executed this engine very well. Again, first in a mass producing to get a VC or a variable compression engine out there, cats off the Nissan. This is actually a pretty cool and pretty awesome power plant. And uh, if you haven't seen my review of the 24 Rogue, please look at that. I'm pretty impressed. It's one of my highlights that I think the Rogue is all about is because of this power. You know, Nissan all put this powertrain into more vehicles. And in fact, I would venture to say the Mitsubishi um, oh, Outlander, the Mitsubishi Outlander, which is basically on the same platform as the Rogue, should have this engine and should dump the 2.5 actually aspirated engine that's in there now. It's just way underpowered unless you get the Outlander plug-in hybrid. But I'm telling you, Nissan should dump that powertrain in the Outlander, should put this powertrain in the Outlander. I think more and more people would buy it. And in fact, I wouldn't mind buying it. I think I like the way the Outlander looks. I just think that the traditional 2.5 in there is just way underpowered for that particular vehicle. But again, Nissan should put this engine into more and more products because it actually is a really good engine. Plenty of power, runs very smooth once you get up off of idle. And uh, I'm just, I've just been impressed by it. If you have any questions, comments, please leave it in the comment section below. Love to hear about those. Love to hear about the questions, comments, everything you guys have. Again, this has been John for JMC Garage Talk here in the JMC Garage. Please hit me up. Hit the bell notification. I upload every single Wednesday morning and every single Saturday afternoon right here. Thank you. All right. So you made it to the end of the video. I really appreciate that. Talking about the 1.5 liter turbo out of the Nissan Rogue, out of the 2024 that I just drove, and we talked about this engine in the JMZ garage. You can see I don't have it before me right now. This is the Maverick. The reason why his hood is popped is I had to add some washer fluid. But beside that, I want to make a few notes. Now, if you follow my channel, I, I would suggest also you follow the I Do Cars channel. Um, if you look it up online, it's or look it up on YouTube, it's I Do Cars. His name is Eric. And just today, as this is going live, he just dropped a teardown video of this exact same engine 
that I just went over in the JMC garage. Um, it is the, known internally under Nissan as the KR15 DDT. And then this engine um, is a couple things I want to remark about this engine as we close out this particular video. A uh, couple things. Number one, one of the things I noticed as he was tearing apart, and you guys will see this as well if you check out his channel and check out the latest teardown of this particular engine. Uh, the camshafts are actually direct acting mechanical buckets, so there's no roller lifter or or a um, there's no roller finger follower or a lifter in itself. The camshaft rests directly on top of the valves, just like the Maverick engine behind me. Pretty neat, pretty interesting. And then also, what I want to remark about this engine is just a very unique design. If you watch the teardown video and you go to the uh, towards the end of the video as he tears apart and tears into the bottom end just the the way that the the connecting rod connects to this fulcrum type design and how it actually adjusts using this big mechanical motor that actually adjusts the the forward up and down motion uh, of the connecting rods to increase or decrease compression it's a very very neat design uh this engine that he's tearing down usually he gets engines that are bad and he tears down his engine. This one's no exception. It is bad. In fact, one of the, uh, I can't reveal, but uh, well, let me just say this, one of the bearings uh, actually spun. And from what I understand with this particular engine, early versions of either the 2 liter and the 1.5 had bearing issues. Uh, it's probably one of the downsides to this engine. Now, I don't know of any issues or anything else that I have heard uh, with the later uh, of the engines, but it's something to be mindful about. Again, I think it's a very neat, very, very cool engine technology. I absolutely love what Nissan has done. It's very mechanically involved, but yet simple at the same time. Um, but it's a very neat engine. Again, I encourage you to watch I Do Cars, his latest teardown of this particular 1.5 liter, the same engine I had in the garage of the VC Turbo. Thank you, guys. You guys be blessed. Have a wonderful day, and we'll catch you on the next one. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I would encourage you to like, comment, subscribe on his channel as well with that teardown. Thank you.